I'm Sean Kantayashi, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about my life with Schnauzer. This is Huckleberry and her puppies that were born on Friday, July 12th. In this video, I'm going to bring you along on my adventures and highlights for an entire week from Friday, July 12th to Friday, July 19th, 2024. This is Nellie. She is one of my little schnauzers, and she's going to help me as I'm editing along the way, piecing together a full week of activities and fun things going on here, including an update on Miss Nellie's puppies. There's a lot going on here today, Anne. Chance is going to be having a gotcha day on Sunday. So he will be um, in the traditional schnauzer style. And so I know you're going to have some fun this morning playing with this little puppy. Look at you. Yeah. You go from a little teddy bear. Huh? You can get a teddy bear for now. Yep, teddy bear today, starting the day. But in a little bit, we'll be checking in on him while Anne is grooming him. So Brianna's already been here. She's done a lot of cleanup and training with all the puppies. Livy had a play date at her home last night, and she just got back from that. Yeah, hi, Sailor. I see you. Sailor was sticking his tongue out. He was sticking his tongue out, wasn't he? And then here are our cutie pies over here. Hi, playful little puppies. Hello. <laughs> Hannah. Hi, Hannah and Haley, and Honey Bear, and Ozzy. Hi, Ozzy. Hello, Ozzy. Hello, Honey Bear. So Anne crawls in the playpen with them when she's here, and everybody gets combed out, and they sometimes get their paw pads clipped out if they need, and their ears cleaned, and whatever else needs to be done. And it's really great for them to get to know Anne this way. But you can see there's also lots of playing going on. So there's Libby and Livy down there playing along with Jelly. And here's Sugar and our little beige girl. Our little beige girl has her gotcha day on Saturday. So, Wavy Davy Jackson! Wavy Davy! Wavy Davy! Wavy Davy! His gotcha day is on Tuesday. And we're going to miss him. So, three puppies are leaving us in the next little bit here. Oh, and, of course, we will send them off with lots of love. Love and love. And... Yes, lots of love. Chance and I are standing outside on my front patio so that we can greet his new family as they arrive. Hi, Mary. Hi, Leo. Hi. Chance, here's your new family. Leo, are you going to come join in too? Ah, oh, there he is. There's our whole family now. All right. Well, welcome to my house. Let's go in and we will get to know, um, you'll get to meet Dazzle and some of the other puppies. Yay. Yay. We've just talked through all the gotcha day stuff here. And I'm so curious, what questions do you have for me? Leo, I think you might have a question. Uh, what's the food brand? The dry fruit brand that you use. So do you see on that can it says Origin, O-R-I-J-E-N? Yeah. The food that's in that bag right there is the Six Fish Origin Dry Food. Six Fish? That's right. And you can find it on my shop on my website if you're looking. And I recommend, uh, we talked over how to approach feeding him. If you want to do the homemade stew every day, you're welcome to do that. But you're also welcome to do uh, the Origin uh, dry food as well. Great. Sounds okay. good. Well, Mary and Leo, you've told me before that you've been watching my channel for a while, and I'm so curious what's different being here live and in person versus watching on the YouTube channel. What do you think? I think the kitchen looks different. I didn't realize it was as open as it is. It's very beautiful. So editor Sean coming back in here to show you what Mary is talking about. When you come in my front door, and you walk in this way. Typically when I greet people outside, I bring them in 
and we fix a cup of tea, maybe some iced tea or some hot tea, depending on what someone likes. But to Mary's point, I do, my primary kitchen is uh, very open. And so I think it came as somewhat of a surprise to her that this is my primary kitchen, living room space and perhaps based on Mary's experience of watching the videos, she had only seen us in the kitchen in the dog area. So in our Montessori school for dogs, we do have a dog kitchen, but this is the kitchen that I invite you into when you come for gotcha day. And then the so that's my kitchen on the first level, yes. not my dog kitchen. Okay. No, the first level kitchen. Yeah, yeah. And then the puppies are so much tinier in person. They are so tiny. You know, I have to laugh because Mary, everybody <laughs> tells me that. And they hear that other people thought that, but they think to themselves, oh, I won't think oh, that. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> I, I hear that all the time, but I was like, there's no way they're that much tinier. But then I'm like, well, two, three pounds, they can't be, but so big and... They are. They are so mm -hmm. tiny. That's right. Well, we just I weighed. Dazzled. We just weighed Chance, and we talked about uh, his shot <laughs> records and the things he's had done. And Chance was what three pounds? Yeah. Three pounds, three eight, pounds ounces eight ounces today on Gotcha Day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very good. I just asked young Leo here if he had any questions for me, and he said nope. He just wants to play okay, with them all. All right, Mary's gonna sit down. They're just all gonna want to play with you. Well, Mary, I'm so excited. You just told me you have a YouTube channel and he's going to be in your YouTube channel. What's your YouTube channel address, Mary? It's Mary, my life, my love. Mary, my life, my love. Well, we're going to get to watch this little boy grow up on his YouTube channel. And Mary has also already been on my list for another one. She wants a girl that looks just like Burberry. So we've got you on the list for that too, I think. Yeah, but, we do. Yeah, very good. That'll be fun. We'll be enjoying watching videos of you and your family with your little fur baby here. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. Oh, you make it a noise, babe. There's a little squeaky noise. Mary, I'm so excited for you. Oh, I'm so happy. And we're going to come back and see you for play dates. Oh, good. Yeah. Well, I know we'll you're, make it work. you're coming back to get your little girl too. So yes. we'll have fun of that. All right, safe Chance travels will be home. No stranger. That's right. Safe travels. Okay. All right. Bye bye. They just had their tails docked literally minutes ago. And notice they're quiet and they're happily nursing. Yeah. I've just picked Nellie up from her guardian home because they let me know that the last two nights they thought she was going to have her puppies early. And so rather than waiting several more days before we get Nellie and bring her to my house, I've picked her up early. Nellie, I'm excited about the adventure in front of us, girlfriend. Here's Nellie rediscovering the patio. You can see she's got a beautiful black coat, solid black. She is a black and silver phantom. Nellie is so cute and such a cuddly little girl. Oh, yes. She slept right next to me last night, and we've gotten her all comfortable and happily integrated back into living in our house. She has this beautiful coat, can do teddy bear or can do traditional schnauzer very well, but she is, like all my dogs, one that needs to be combed and brushed every day. And when she has puppies, that's going to be really difficult. So we're going to go ahead and put her into the mom cut and getting all of this extra coat off of her so that when her puppies do arrive, it will be much easier for her and for them. Now she might surprise us and have her puppies a little earlier than expected. You might say, how does that happen? Well, it's puppies typically arrive 63 days after the mother ovulates, ovulates. And so we breed knowing that on the day that we do the breeding, 
the male dog believes that the timing is right. They both believe the timing is right. But if mom had ovulated a few days prior, that's how we end out sometimes having mom dogs give birth to their litters a few days before we thought their due date. So we'll see what happens here. We'll be interesting because she's definitely showing signs of very early labor. Here's what her belly looks like. In preparation for Wavy Davy Jackson's gotcha day, I have begun his bath. He is being very, very good in the bathtub here as I am getting him wet. He's calm and relaxed. Now that he's all wet, I'm going to shampoo him with the eye, green, uh, eye Groom Squalene Care Shampoo, and I'll be using the Squalene Care Conditioner. And you can see I've mixed those up because they are highly concentrated in the containers that I buy them in. So I mix them with some water and we're ready to lather him up. The shampoo has been sitting on Jackson now for about five minutes. I've cleaned out the insides of his ears really well. And it just, the, the shampoo makes everything feel so luxurious. There's just a smoothy silkiness as I run my hands over Jackson's body as he is enjoying the massage that's coming with this shampoo experience. I'm gonna rinse this out really well so that everything runs clear and then I will put conditioner on him. I love to be abundant with conditioner. He is just thoroughly soaking now in conditioner and the conditioner will stay on him for another five minutes or so. Sometimes I will wrap a dog in the towel and carry them around with me for a little while when I am doing conditioner. He has a coat and skin that is just fabulous. So I think the five minute version of conditioning will work very well for Mr. Jackson today. But you can see he's being fabulous. You're such a good boy. Yes, you are. He does great while being rinsed. And this is because our puppies have been bathed and have had this experience many times. So this is certainly not his first time in here having this experience. But this is what you should expect from an eight to 10 week old puppy. I put Jackson in the shower with a towel hanging down so that he can shake off really well in the shower and walk through the towel as you see him doing. My other dogs think that this is great fun. And while he is in there, I wash off the conditioner bottles and the shampoo bottles and I put everything back away. It's time to towel him dry. And when I towel dry, I go with the hair. I don't rub against the hair. And after I towel dry, I'm going to comb him very well. And then we will use the Forsair, the professional blow dryer on him because that's what he would experience. <laughs> He's enjoying looking at himself in the mirror. But uh, this is the type of dryer that he will experience when he goes to get a professional groom. And we want him to be all prepared for a professional groomer when it's the time for him to do so. He has now been all combed out and he's gotten to shake off several times. You'll notice I always have my hand on him. I, I could probably take my hand off of him just a little bit and he would be okay, but I think of, it's my responsibility to make sure he's safe always. And so literally just keeping my hand right on him is a key to keeping him super safe. I could also put this harness on him as well if I felt like I needed to. But for right now, I'm happy doing it this way. So after the force air dry, I'm not finished, but I wanted to show you that he does not come by his nickname anymore. So Wavy Davy is now not so wavy. A force air dryer like this 
will dry the hair straight as you can see. I'm going to use my curved shears here, my, my scissors, to shape him up. And then when his new family arrives, I'm going to ask them if they would like him groomed tighter. And if so, I'm going to do it with them. Meaning I'll show them how to use the clippers to do the teddy bear cut if they want that. I should say that another way. I know they want him in a teddy bear. I know that. The question is how short or how long of a teddy bear. So I'm going to leave him a little long. And then if they want him shorter, we'll do it. So the first thing that I did was just take my straight shears and cut the, air, the hair right in front of his eyes so that it opens up his eyes really clearly. Next, I've combed the hair on the top of his head up straight. And so now I'm taking the curved shears and I'm going to just shape Next, that. I just used the scissors again to cut out this hair right in front of his ears. He's got beautiful, clean, nice ears and wanting them to be able to breathe easily. So he's been an indoor dog and he's about to start going outside. And I will tell you that it is extremely hot outside today. And so it's so important when we clean their ears, as we have done very well here, we'll trim out this hair right here. And then when he starts going outside, we've got to make sure that his ears are dry so that uh, the heat doesn't create a yeast problem. Next, I hold one foot up and I use my round shears to we could call it carve out, frame out the foot. So you can see I've done this one and I need to do the other one. You can see here how I put him under my arm here so I can get access to his paw pads really easily so that I can use my clippers to clip out the hair in between the pads of his feet so that he's walking on the pads of his feet instead of walking on hair. Jackson is sitting in my lap on my front porch as we are waiting on his new family to arrive. And there are lots of noises out here, aren't there? There's trucks. There are actually landscapers that are out front here working on the landscaping. And there's birds and all kinds of fun things. Yeah. Jackson is one of Sweet Tea's three puppies. And this is the one that we were calling the little gold boy in the beginning. And so Sweet Tea had Marley and Jackson and the little girl we call Beige Girl. She has her gotcha day coming up in a few days. This is the litter where I had the big surprise because Wavy Davy Jackson and Beige Girl's DNA came back first and they came back as 100% miniature schnauzers and then their siblings DNA results came back saying he was a schnoodle and that was a big surprise for me because they have lots of siblings they have lots of full siblings actually and those full siblings are all in their DNA miniature schnauzers so I'm still learning, and I think we're all still learning about how to use DNA to understand breed. But the thing we know is that you are in really great shape. You are a lovely little boy. I love your shirt, Team Jackson. Here we are. Gotcha day indeed. You can take him. There you go. Yes. Oh He's had a really nice bath and a bit of a trim. Well, look at what Jackson's new uh, family brought for me. This is what an awesome dog breeder looks like. Oh my goodness, what a sweet gift. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. We're so thankful for you. Yes. We really oh. are. You are awesome. Oh, right back at you. Yeah. Isn't that right, Jackson? Well, I mentioned when you were here last time that if you wanted to, I've, I've got him in a super long teddy bear right now, 
but if you wanted me to, I'll show you what it looks like to clip him down into a shorter teddy bear. Yeah, that would be fun. Yeah, I did all the basics on him. So, you know, eyes and ears and um, feet and all that have already been done, but it would just be the clipper work that I could show you today if you want to see it. Yes, that would be great. Thank all you right, so much. let's go so do it. So these two are full siblings, both yes. sweet tea puppies, and the Embark DNA says they are both 100% Miniature schnauzers. <laughs> <laughs> so they want to be able to do some of the basic grooming on this little fellow themselves. So I'm going to show them things like how to do the sanitary trim and let them get their hands on the clippers and the scissors and see how it works. So for sanitary trim, we take the Kinshi Flash 5 and we just move right up the belly like this. We're just grazing. So Tamara, why don't you come try this? Hold this clipper. Notice what you notice with it in your hand. You're gonna hold it right up there. What do you notice about that? It's pretty light. And that, I don't know. It's very light, isn't it? It's very, very light. easy. And what do you notice about him? He's so calm. He is so easy. You know why? This is not the first time he's had this done. We do things like run the clippers over their body constantly, daily, so that they get used to this and at 8, 10, 12 weeks old, they're a breeze on the grooming table because of this. So sometimes people will say, oh my gosh, I don't want a puppy that's flying all over the place. Um, but again, you, you can see he's, he's not. You don't have to worry about that. All right, so that was the first part. Next, let's look at tail. Now, again, I've already done some of this, but um, you could take your shears, and the type of shears that you use make a huge difference. These are the uh, Kinshi Amy Lee Go Groomer series, the Blue Sapphire series, and they are by far the best scissors I have ever used. So, I uh, highly recommend them. Um, you can just see, you can do that that way. You can also take the Kinshi Flash 5 and you can go right away from the anus like that. Making sense? Mm -hmm. yes. yes. All right. So we'll clean out, we've, we've cleaned out the belly, we've cleaned out under the, and then we can also do the tail. And you can turn the tail into a little pom pom if you want, or you can turn the tail into. Um, it's sort of a more groomed style, just depends on what you like and how much of the tail you want to see. All right, we said that we were going to, um, we have him now in a long teddy bear. Right. So I'm going to show you how to put him in a shorter teddy bear. And to do this, I'm going to use my wall KM cordless first. And you can see I've got the orange clip-on comb here. All right, you ready? Yeah. Yes. Yep, we're gonna do this. <laughs> we're gonna do this. Yep, you know here are. Say goodbye. <laughs> Say goodbye to the big teddy bear. <laughs> so I don't know if you oh, can yeah. get in here and see what this is doing. Yes. Um, Tamara, do you want to run the clipper over his body a little bit yourself? That would be awesome. So hold it here like that. I'll go around. Yeah, you. there you go. And now you're just going to come right down. There you go. Now notice this is probably a two-person job for the two of you. So I'm holding him under the jaw, and I'm okay. holding my hand under his belly right now. Okay. When you get really good at this, you can do it with one hand. You're holding one hand under the belly, and you can go right up against his skin with the flat part of that. There you go. Good. So tell me what you're feeling. What does that feel like in your hand? It's very light, a nice little gentle vibration. He doesn't appear that it's bothering him at all. He is not at all stressed by this. No. He looks pretty relaxed. And in fact, we've told him it's a massage. <laughs> <laughs> so you're getting a beautiful massage, little guy. Yeah, yeah. All right. So um, I'm going to show you more about, like, I'm going to pull the ear back and get right in here. 
And see how I'm holding this clipper? I'm going to go over an area two or three times just to get it in. And you don't want a skirt, right? A skirt would be more traditional schnauzer. Mm -hmm. a teddy bear doesn't really have a skirt. So goodbye skirt. So you see what I'm doing there? Yes. Yeah? Okay, now then I'm going to come right down here. And I'm going to hold his leg back like this. And I'm taking it right down the leg. So he's going to be in a shorter teddy bear now for you that can grow out pretty easily. And you could maintain this yourselves if you have the right equipment. That's the okay. whole key to this. People who try to maintain these things without the right equipment get really frustrated and then they don't understand why it's not working. Right. Yeah, okay. So I'm gonna come down the front of the leg, side of the leg. Now this is where I'm not particularly great at the scissor techniques. Okay. So I usually have somebody come in behind me and do the scissoring techniques. Just because this is easy for me to hold. I have a wee bit of arthritis-y stuff in my hands. Mm. And so um, this, is, this is easy for me to do, as you can see, right? <laughs> yes. There we go. Say, I'm a good boy. I'm such a good boy. Yes. Okay. And I would say just go with the grain of the coat. Okay. Unless for some reason you want it extra shorter. And you can see how I'm going over areas two and three times just to help the clipper... Uh, the look of the, hopefully it's making sense what I'm saying. Yes. <laughs> Such a good boy. You are so good. You are so good. All right, can you believe all that hair came off of him? I know. That's crazy. So I think I'll clean all this hair off of the okay. table for a minute. Yeah. <laughs> we'll clean the hair off so we can see what we're doing. And this is the way I like to clean the hair off. I'll just take a brush. It makes it a whole lot easier. That's a lot of hair. Can you believe that? And then I had already groomed him some. <laughs> like I had already taken some off. So wow. yes. And um, we've been calling him Wavy Baby <laughs> Jackson. Right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And when you look at him as a puppy, he has a lot of wavy hair. But today when you saw him, it was all straight. Exactly. Because it had been blown out with a force air dryer. Yeah, okay. I've gone over it a couple times, right? Yes. But you can see how you, this is why I have to do this. Yeah. Okay. Because I have to come back. And sometimes I'll just come back with my scissors like this. Okay. And just get right in there and trim that, make that even. You see what I'm doing? Yes. See, there's a straight line now there. Yep. Yes. And so this is where this scissoring the legs like this um, can be helpful too. But it's not always easy. On, I mean, today I'm not having any problems with my hands to do this, but sometimes that's not so fun for me. Um, so you can hold the leg out like this too and just come right along here and see how I'm just evening that out. Yes. So do you have some good shears at home where you, like hair cutting we shears? We will get You're some. Okay. Yep. yep. Well, you can see how you can just go right along that line, yeah? Okay. Yeah. All right. Now let's see, where else do we need to... He does look smaller, doesn't he? Yes. How much does he weigh? Well, I have the scale out for us okay. to weigh him. Oh, cool. I do like to do weighing on Gotcha Day. Um, okay, I just started to go in the wrong direction. Did you see me start to go uh, that yes. way? Yes. And then I corrected myself pretty fast and said, no, 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 go this way so that it all weighs right. Okay. Okay, I'll bring this out and get this going again. This will make it better. All right. And so as long as you've got a guard comb on, okay. you can do this this way. If you don't have a guard comb on, you got to be careful because there's some flappy skin right in here and you don't want it to get caught in the clippers. 
And this is where if you have your own clippers, you'll be able to do it in an hour or two later, come back and say, oh, I see a little area over here that I want to fix or something like that. Okay. Somebody's talking oh. to us, and it's, oh, it's mom and daughter. Yes. Uh. And, um, either daughter has something mom wants, or vice versa. <laughs> and I could I could gather that it is over a, a little toy, a little, probably a marrow bone. Ah. Uh. Because they it's both the love toy. their marrow. Oh, it's a toy. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yep, mm -hmm. those are my two. <laughs> yeah. All right. So you notice here how I'm sort of going the opposite direction? Yes. Okay, so I'm gonna come right up here. I'm gonna get under there. I happen to like ears long. I'm not, like, is it, are you okay with his ears staying long like that? Yes. yes. If, if you said no, what we would do is we would hold the ear in our hands and we would use our thumb as the guide around the ear. So here's his ear right here. There's where his ear ends. Okay. This is all hair. Okay. So if you said, I don't want long hair on his ear, I would go like that. And okay. now I've got, I know from where my finger is. Right. So if you decide, see, I like that long, like almost um, pigtail look or oh, something. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. But if you say, no, I want them short, there's how you can do that. And now um, I have, let's see here. Yeah. Okay, so for the top of the head, I'm you could if you had a pair of clippers, you can just change out the color. And you do not have to have two pair of clippers. You don't have to have even three pair of clippers to do this. Okay. I'm in a situation where I've got multiple dogs. Right. And I, I can't be uh, without clippers. So if I had a pair of clippers that didn't do what they were supposed to do, I gotta have a backup. So sometimes people may wonder why. Do you so many clippers. <laughs> and do we all have to have so many clippers? No, you don't have to have so many clippers. So this is a longer guard comb now, okay. just to make the head just a wee bit longer, longer. than the rest of the body. Okay. And you can see how I'm doing this. Just getting right in there. I did trim out his ears really well. See how his ears are super cleaned out? Now this is where some someone recently said to me, "Hey, I want I want a Schnauzer head, Schnauzer oh. head mm -hmm. on a teddy bear body." Ah. And I say, "Okay, where do you want the Schnauzer head to stop and the teddy bear body to start? Because that's tricky. Can you see that that would be tricky yeah. all of a sudden when you look at them? For example, my little Schnauzers over here. Where would that line happen?" If we were going to distinguish that. Now, again, with, with your shears, you can come back in here and do this. Okay. Just get a little bit of that. But look at those beautiful eyelashes. Look at those eyelashes on this boy. <laughs> yeah. I will uh, mention that I have been using a curved shear that's okay. on the table here. And I have multiples of these, again, because I can't be in a situation where I don't have my tools. Right. You know, you may not need two sets of everything. Um, but these chunker shears are also really great. And if you create a line, a hard edge line, and you don't want it to look like a line, you can come back in over the line okay. and soften it up. Okay. So that's when you would use those. Okay. All right, what do you think? I think he looks amazing. Uh, he's your little boy. You want to go grab him? Here you go. I'm going to go over oh, this okay. one more time. Okay. I keep seeing little things and I think, oh, let me do that. But that's that's the nature of this kind of grooming. Yeah. Is you, you'll look at it and then you'll come back a little later and you'll look at it again. So just tying the head into the body here. And see how even though I've gone over it multiple times, I'm still getting little bits. Yeah. Great. So 
handsome. All right. How does he look? Amazing. Like Where are you dating Jackson? Jackson? You're just Jackson now. You're not going to be I don't wavy. think he's ever not going to be wavy, Davey. Yes. All right. Yeah. Well, he'll be wavy, Davey, too, even though your hair is now straight for this, this couple. <laughs> we love you so much. And we know you're going to have a great life. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. out what Mr. Wavy Davy Jackson weighs today on Gotcha Day. So, Wavy Davy weighs, so that would say five pounds, nine ounces, five pounds, seven ounces. He's in that range. <laughs> Very good. So here he is, Wavy Davy Jackson. You're, you, you've got the t-shirt on, Team Jackson, and there he is, just right in front of the, the shirt. I think that's so perfect. Well, I'm very happy for you and for the life that you're gonna create together. And I know you're getting another one, a Burberry lookalike, I think is what you've yes, said you want. Yes, yes. So we will have a lot of fun doing that too. And Miss Liberty says, hey, I did not like that you stopped playing fetch with me. <laughs> Tamara was playing fetch with Liberty. So Liberty's uh, asking loudly here. Like, uh, yes. Yeah. And there he goes. We love you. Nellie, we're going to do your puppy count x-ray. And we've got some other puppies in the back with us who are going to get their next round of DHPP shots. We are at Quakertown Vet Hospital this morning getting our third DHPP shots on these little girls. So Libby and Sweet Tea's little beige girl, who I think is named Amsel, and sugar are getting their vaccines. Yeah, yeah, and they're doing great. So it's fun to see them this morning. Their tails are wagging. They are happy to be here. This little girl, I think her name again is Amsel, but I'm not sure I'm saying it right. They, it's a German uh, word. And um, she will be having her gotcha day this Saturday, so a few days from now. And Miss Libby here, oh, she is just so full of fun personality and playful. Hi, look at these adorable little red ears that she has, very cute. And you can always see when she is happy, her tail wags and she's a happy girl. Yes, you are. One of the things I just love about Libby is that she can entertain herself and keep herself very occupied with toys and things to do and she's great in the car and on the grooming table so she is doing very well yes miss libby sugar is very curious here at the vet this morning she is wanting to get out and go on an adventure and libby is keeping herself entertained with some of the toys here in the stroller and little Miss Libby also loves to be held and cuddled and played with. She is just such a great little snuggler cuddler. I've got her right up against me here. Another very nice thing about little, little Libby here is she is very calm and relaxed. So when she sees another person or another dog, she is just super easygoing. Yeah, say I'm a very relaxed little girl and a happy girl. She's sitting in my lap very happily. And there are so many sounds, other dogs, lots of different people. And here we are. Hi. Hello. She's so good. Yeah. Hi, baby. So even before Dr. Geller comes in the room, we are looking at the x-ray for Nellie to see how many puppies we can see. And I definitely see one. I see two. There's a third. There's a fourth. Wow. Okay, this is exciting. I don't see any tricksters. Okay, so Dr. Geller says it's an, it's an obvious four, and I'm not sure that there are any hiding there. Yeah, I think four is pretty reasonable expectation. All right, Nellie's having four puppies. Yeah, that's what I would tell you. Last time Nellie was here, she weighed seven pounds. 
at my house, I weighed her and she was about nine and a half pounds. And here today, she's 10 pounds. So this is great. Normally she's seven, seven -ish, eight ish, right? Mm -hmm. And um, so she's gained some weight with her puppies, which would make a lot of sense, Miss Nellie. So here's little Miss Beige Girl on the scale today. And she weighs four pounds. It looks like um, four pounds, point two. Is that how you see it too? Yeah, four pounds, two ounces. All right. Putting Libby on the scale now. Four pounds, four ounces. Is that how you see it too? Yep. Hey, look at us, Miss Cutie Pie. Yeah. And next up is sugar. How much do you weigh this morning, sugar? Sugar weighs four pounds, 15 ounces. Yeah. Hi, sugar. So head to tail exams going on, and yeah. I can't help but point out what a great little girl Nellie is being. She's just calm and relaxed, easygoing. And you said when you did the x-ray with her, she was just super yep. calm. She's super calm. She's yeah. Fine. Fine. She's an easy little girl. So this is sugar getting her exam at the moment. And here's our little beige girl, Amsel. Also very getting her exam and so far none of these puppies have squeaked i mean ever oh yeah when I remember, they i remember we did them and they were when they've they had their very, uh, happily they, surprised at how brave they are a brave gang yeah well they got a lot to live up to then they better not squeak today no nope. well we didn't sugar didn't squeak no, we she one, just we sort of one said for one at the moment yeah even when they got their microchips they oh, yeah? just were wow. super calm so oh, yeah. i was like what is going on uh, yeah baby. doesn't care see very brave. Just looking around. Easy, looking around. Easy going. And next up is Libby. Okay. Libby's doing so great. I can tell by the way she's holding her body and her eyes. She's saying, what is she's, going on with me? nervous about something. It's going to be okay, Libby. Yes. Oh, yes. you're great. Look at you. So brave. Oh, so brave when you got your good. shot, Libby. Oh, yes. Just like before. Yeah. Quaker okay. Town Vet is known for being able to take care of pretty much every kind of animal there is. And I am always fascinated by what I see here. Oh my goodness. Okay, you're standing. How old is... How old? They're a year and a half. Oh my goodness. Wow. What are their names? This is Maple, who was just stayed. And this is... Milton. Maple and Milton. Oh my goodness, they're fabulous. So she was just spayed. Oh wow. Hi. Say hi. Yeah, say hi. Oh, how fun. They all travel so well in the car. Everybody's doing great. So you have four puppies, little Missy. And if each of those puppies weigh four ounces when they're born, that means you have one pound of puppies in you. And that's pretty normal for a dog your size. This is what early labor looks like. Occasionally there's some panting going on and then there's some relaxing, sleeping for a little while and then a little more panting. It's Friday the 19th of July in the wee hours of the morning and Nellie is having her first puppy. Nellie's first puppy is a little girl. So it looks like we've got a pretty black and silver little girl here. And of course, Nellie is doing everything she can to lick her and take care of her. It always amazes me. At minutes old, this puppy already knows to nurse. Nellie's second puppy is about to be born, and you can tell she's doing the pushing here to get that second puppy into the lower end of the birth canal. She's doing a great job, Nellie. I have a hot water bottle here in my little container that I will put the first girl into when the second puppy arrives so that we can do what we need to do to take good care of that second one without the first one having a problem.
This is editor Sean popping into the sequence here of the video after the fact. This is puppy number two, a boy. He is thriving 12 hours later. But coming up next in the video, you're going to see that I didn't think that was possible right after he was born. I learned something very significant today. I'm going to share a breakthrough with you that both Jim and I learned today that saved this little puppy's life. I will explain more about that in a few minutes. We'll keep going with the sequence of what happened during the birthing. Nellie and puppy number one are doing great. Puppy number one here, this girl, nursing away. Unfortunately, this is part of what happens. So this is puppy number two, and puppy number two is not doing very well. I have puppy number two on this hot water bottle to get him heated up, but he is not breathing properly. And I don't really, I, I, I'm doing all that I can but my experience of puppies that are breathing the way he is breathing is that they don't make it. And so again, I'm not, I'm not trying to make that happen. I'm just trying to be very honest with myself about the reality. We're doing all we can here with uh, our syringe bulb and with keeping him warm and we're doing the best we can. What you are going to see next is a video that I sent to my friend, Tree, and he happens to be Daisy's father. Some of you may remember. He is a amazing human being, a saint. He also has a commitment to do everything he can to help save puppies. After I sent him this video that's coming up right next, this next clip, I'll, I'll tell you what happened. This little puppy is not breathing properly. He was just born. He's four ounces. I'm not quite sure what to do with him. Again, he's just not breathing in a normal way. Curious what you would recommend. There just aren't enough words to express my gratitude to Dr. Tree for what he taught me today. I'm going to show you now what he taught me that enabled me to save this puppy's life. What Tree told me to do was get a towel like this, put the puppy in the towel and rub him vigorously for 15 minutes while at the same time having warm or hot steam on the puppy. Tree suggested that we get in the shower with him and have hot shower water. But frankly, there was so much going on here with the next puppy being born and so forth. So Jim took a towel like this, roughed him up, rubbed him vigorously with the towel and then we took our steamer our clothing steamer and we had it blowing really warm hot steam out so we held the puppy up above the steam coming out of this steamer and within as tree said about 15 minutes the puppy was breathing normal the third puppy is on the way and um Dr. Tree has helped me figure out a solution for what to do with puppy number two. And he right now is in a bunch of hot steam, helping him to breathe. So he was really struggling with breathing puppy number two. And here's puppy number three on the way right now. Well, Tree, you've done it again. I think you've saved a puppy's life. We just did not know what to do with this little guy. And he is now doing so much better than he was when he was first born. And that first bit of time, I just didn't know what to do with him. Tree, I can't thank you enough. And the good news is Miss Nellie has four puppies this morning. Yes. Look at them. We had four puppies and... Three of them are black and silver, or maybe a black and red, not sure. And one of them is a chocolate, maybe chocolate red, chocolate tan. I'm always grateful when we have puppies and you can tell them apart easily. So this, the first one, the black and silver girl, she was, uh, her birth started around 3 a.m. The water sack showed up at uh, 3 a.m.-ish 
and so she was on her way. Then the black and silver, number two boy, four ounces. The chocolate girl was third, and the black and silver boy, number four, is 6.2 ounces. So he's a big guy, so it's easy to tell these two puppies apart, even though they are black and silver boys. I love the way the light is shining in the room at the moment. These are Huckleberry's puppies, and they are one week old today. So it's interesting that Huckleberry and Nellie have had their puppies a week apart. So here's the update on these four little ones. Miss Huckleberry is being such a great mom. And here's the little guy who Tree helped us save. This little guy is latching on and nursing. And Dana's assignment here, thank you so much, Dana. Yeah. Dana's assignment here for the next 15, 20 minutes is to just keep him as close to mom as she can and keep him latched on as long as she can. But the others are all thriving on their own. They don't need anybody to hold them on to be latched on. They are nursing beautifully. And Miss Nellie here is just a happy mama. You did such a good job, Nellie. Oh my goodness, look at them all. Aren't they just beautiful? So the little guy, I'm feeling very confident. Thank you so much, Tree. I just well up as I was explaining to Dana here about your help. I just well up with gratitude for you, Tree. Thank you. just said, where's the pretty girl? <laughs> yeah, we didn't see you. We didn't see you because you were hiding under the box over there. And Ann says, where's the pretty girl? And you <laughs> came out, yes, yes. So up to this point, we've been calling this little girl who was just groomed like a traditional schnauzer today. We've been calling her beige girl, um, but she has a gotcha day tomorrow. So Anne was getting her all ready for her. Oh, isn't she cute? Great job, Anne. Anne and I are talking about how stunning she is. She is just gorgeous. So you've been watching her up to this point in this beautiful beige colored teddy bear style, but thanks to Anne's great grooming, she's now looking just like a beautiful schnauzer girl. Pretty girl. Yes, she's a pretty girl. Oh. Yes. <laughs>
And then the final one that was born is this black and silver boy. And their birth weights do not have a correlation to their weights when they are eight weeks old or when they're full grown. So you might wonder, what is that dangling on him? And that's just part of the umbilical cord. But there they are. These are Nellie's four puppies. Beautiful. Back to Huckleberry's puppies for a few minutes here. What I'm going to do next in this video is a little different. I'm actually bringing you along when I met my son for brunch on Sunday afternoon at the Hershey Hotel in Hershey, Pennsylvania. And so for those of you who are only here for the dogs, you may want to stop watching now. But if you want to see a little bit more of things that I find fascinating and uh, understand that my life is more than my dogs, I also have a son and I have friends. I have a big life outside of my dog breeding as well. And so I'm going to bring you along. And Carol, this is especially for you. I'm at the Hershey Hotel. We're here to have brunch in the beautiful circular dining room, but they have exquisite gardens. And today they have a Rolls Royce show going on. Everything about the Hershey Hotel and the areas around it are just meticulously landscaped. I love the sign, Rolls Royce parking. You can get a feel for some of the cars on display here at the moment. This is a convertible. What fun. I love Rolls Royces because every detail inside them is meticulously designed, well thought out. Just such beautiful craftsmanship. Look at this gorgeous car. This, this is a silver shadow. And you have to laugh because notice what they have on the dashboard inside this silver shadow. They're gray Poupon mustard. But again, just look at the detailing and how beautiful this classic car is. Even better. Bentley. Yep, that's right. Oh, I love this. <laughs> yeah, there you go. In your livery there. I'm enjoying this beautiful Bentley and amazing day at Hershey Hotel and Gardens. Oh, and right. uh, what Butter fun! Butterflies and Bentleys. That's right. I love it. Butterflies and Bentleys. It doesn't get any better than that. Well, one thing would make it a little better. If I had a little schnauzer here with me. Mm. <laughs> and here's my son. William, enjoying this beautiful Bentley. And Hershey's a pretty good place to wind up. The Rose Garden this year is just spectacular. They have an ice cream stand out. How nice. Well, it's hot out here today, and so it's a nice thing. Yeah. So all of the cars here tell you what type of car it is. So this is a Silver Shadow Saloon. And you can see some of them have little setups to show you what it looks like when you go for a picnic in this car. It's a 1980 Rolls Royce. Again, what I just love about them is how meticulous, how incredibly well made they are. Every detail taken into account. Some people account. come here to look at all the different classifications of roses, because as you can imagine, in this kind of garden, there are just hundreds, maybe thousands of different types of roses. There's here. also a children's garden with lots of things to do for kids and a butterfly garden. We have a little game here. Find Filbert the frog. Let's see if we can find him.
Oh, we found him. There he is. Normally this place is just covered in butterflies, but I'm thinking perhaps because it's so hot today, it's not. But here's one, here's a happy butterfly. So the ball is going up based on the pressure of the water fountain. And we could of course step in there and take the ball out of this heart fountain. But why would we wanna do that? It's so pretty. We got to go to the Cottage Garden private event for the Rolls-Royce Club here in this region. Yeah, very fun. That's right. The Hershey Hotel has a world-class spa. It was originally modeled after the spa at the Greenbrier Resort. This is part of the inside of the Hotel Hershey. And right through here is the circular dining room. We are eating brunch today in what is called the circular here at the Hershey Hotel. And you can see really quickly why it's called the circular, but gorgeous buffet. And I decided to try the avocado Benedict with some shrimp to start. Yummy. This is the back of the hotel. And there you can see the circular dining room where we just had a lovely brunch. the courage that it took for Milton Hershey to build this in 1915 during the Great Depression. Just amazing what he did even though the world at large was very depressed. While I don't know a lot about Milton H. Hershey's life, I know a little bit, and it's clear to me that he had a commitment to expanding love and joy in the world, just like I have a commitment to expanding love and joy in the world with my doggies. Hey, thank you so much for watching this video. Please give it a thumbs up, make a comment below. We always love your comments and uh, just so grateful that you're on the journey with us. To be continued.